mirrors and such, but basically the way it works is a red laser shines up here on the mirror. Um, I shoot it up kind of at an angle though. I put the laser a little bit below the mirror on the router and then I, it causes this beam to come up, climb up about to seven feet up here. And then that gets that beam out of everybody's way. If now it's up above our heads, it bounces back still at about seven feet. Now it's behind me. This mirror is adjustable. I could stand here. This is where we stand when we're doing our observations and running the equipment. Um, and so I can adjust that mirror, which lets me adjust uh, where the mirror is going to fall on this too. So it, it keeps me from having to run out here to this distant mirror all the time. So anyway, the light goes up here to this, back here, then out to the backyard of about 40 meters out here. Total distance there. My whole distance was, I think it was like 78 or 80 meters after, I can, I've forgotten now, but anyway, then it comes back. And when it comes back off of this, this is, these are all first surface mirrors. Yeah, that's a first surface mirror. This is a first surface mirror. All of them are first surface mirrors. When it comes back, this beam right here is about the size of a softball, maybe a little bigger. So it needs to be refocused. That's what this lens does. This is a four meter focal length lens, a real long focal length lens. It's about six inches in diameter. Actually, I wasn't sure where I could get those. I ended up getting that lens for $25 on the internet uh, at a uh, place called Surplus Shed. And uh, that was the cheapest place I could find them. Otherwise, I didn't, wasn't sure if I could even do this because without that lens, I would have been stuck. Um, but 25 was a good price, I thought. Anyway, it comes back. It does the same thing it did on the other experiment. Now this mirror has rotated from the rest position. So this is the beam. Let's say it doesn't matter which one here for this purpose. Let's say this is the beam right here when the mirror was at rest. When the mirror was not moving, the laser easily traveled up, around, did all this, came back, met the mirror at the same place. That's where it landed. But then when the mirror uh, is in rotation, the faster it goes, then this beam, come, when it, by the time it returns, the mirror has rotated ever so slightly, and we calculate that angle, just like I said on the other, uh, for the other method. And this observation port's nice because you look straight down on it, and you know gave us some good accurate measurements. We got within 97% of the speed of light, a little better than 97%. One of our measurements, darn near, was right on the money. Kind of surprised us, but in fairness, we took an average for our measurements, and we came up to uh, <coughs> about. It was a little better than 97% accuracy for the speed of light. So that's what I did. You know, I wanted to measure the speed of light in my garage. And that's the plan we used to do it. One quick thing, though, about these mirrors up here. I call these beam balancer mirrors. It's something I came up with um, because the problem is when you're dealing with lasers, mirrors, moving mirrors and lasers, your big enemy is lines. I mean, I like I said, I tried a lot of different things, and the thing I kept running into was the lasers and mirrors, movie mirrors like to make lines, and you can't measure a line very well because it, uh, it doesn't have clear ends. Lines kind of fade out on their ends. They trail out, they're difficult. What you want is you want a, 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 a snapshot of light at a given moment, and that's what these mirrors gave us up here because they are very sensitive. I mean, one movement here, a little bit, when that laser light moves off of that a little bit, that throws that off even more. And so by the time it gets down here, now it's no longer in this mirror. And then the same principle applies to this. By the time this one moves a little bit, it's no longer in, gonna line up. And so the optics of this whole system really only work under a specific snapshot of light, which is, is, which is what you want. That's why I called them beam balancers, because it, it makes this light beam that we're measuring very precarious and very, you know, like it's, it only shows up when all the optics are completely lined up, which is exactly what we want. Because when we look here, we want to see a point of light or a dot of light. It might be kind of big, but we don't want it to run and be a line. And so this system, I was really pleased with this because it really creates a real uh, blink out system to where that light is just it's on and it's off, it blinks, and you can see the detail of the light. It's not a, it's not a string of, uh, it's not a line of, um, of light that's uh, blurry and difficult to deal with. So anyway, that's the speed of light. Thanks.
Let's just see if we can see the circle. Yeah. All right, I'm rolling, so let's uh, run it and see what we're saying. physically move the mirror 10 degrees but the laser dot has moved twice that from 90 to 110 so remember when you get that angle cut it in half <laughs>